Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Once more, we thank uh, the NPTA for their presence this morning and for their presentation. As we uh, move forward now with the discussions, we're uh, swinging back uh, to the issue of uh, politics. The general elections uh, are due in 2025, but the United National Congress do have internal elections for the national executive that are called for June. However, uh, the post of political leader is not up for contest. That being said, however, there have been calls about the leadership of the United National Congress and uh, one member, one opposition member, has spoken out uh, expressing the need for the best version of the UNC for 2025. That member of parliament is uh, Rushton Parry, who represents the people of Mayaro, and he joins us virtually this morning. Hello, sir, and uh, welcome to AM Prime. Hi, good morning. Good morning for the... Uh, to the viewers and listeners and thank you for having me this morning um you know it's been an incredible weekend this weekend uh, and um you know i want to start by saying that you know this week you know we must ask the tax and ask crime and then we must ask the pnm to make sure that we can have a a, a country moving forward so i just thought that i would let you know get that out of the way while it's early because I know the, the conversation may be more around the politics, but I think it's important that, you know, we understand the situation that we're in this Monday morning, and we're in a perilous place in this country, and there are lots of things that we need to address outside of the politics as well. Certainly indeed, Mr. Parry. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, sentiment expressed. Uh, that being said, um, one of the uh, issues that uh, has uh, popped up, and I, I use the term issue, because of the debate uh, surrounding commentary um, and even the response, it would seem, uh, from uh, your own colleagues regarding uh, you expressing the need for the best version of the United National Congress in 2025. Now, I want to start by asking you, in your opinion, what you believe to be the best version uh, of the United National Congress heading into the 2025 general elections. Well, I mean, the best version of anything is something that can perform well we need to have the best version of our party that can win elections in 35 days mm -hmm. an election can be called at the minimum of, of, of 35 days whether it is 35 days from today or later this year or next year we must be prepared to have the best version and when i say the best version a party where all the arms of the party all the organizations of the party are running on all cylinders i do not believe that we are running on all cylinders i do think we are a formidable political vehicle as we stand today but we can always do better and one of the avenues for that is an election which is constitutionally due and it allows the membership to have a say in what they feel is the way to move forward. This is not Rashtan Pari alone saying this, by the way. This is feedback from the broader membership, from members in, in Mayaro throughout the country. And all they're asking for is, look, they want to make sure that the party that they hold tremendous value and love for, that they be given an opportunity to make sure that the best team goes forward. And mm -hmm. that's all they're asking. Mm -hmm. Now, given that you said that you don't believe that the party is functioning with uh, full cylinders, uh, should an election be called in 35 days, as you so expressed? That mm. being said, are you of the opinion that the best version of the United National Congress does not necessarily mean um, the current United National Congress executive under the political leadership of Kamala Basad Bissasa? Well, that's something for the membership to decide. Perhaps they are. Well, I'm asking your opinion. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, I have given you my opinion. My opinion that this, the, the party is not functioning in all cylinders. And the membership should be given an opportunity to decide that. Now, remember, before I am an MP, I'm a lifetime member of this party. I'm a lifetime member. And I have a right, like every other member, to cast a vote when it's constitutionally due. Now, whoever do agree with that, that's, their, that's, their, that, that's a problem for them. But as a member of the party, that I want an opportunity to cast a vote to make sure that is the best team taking us forward. And that is a right that I have as a member of the party. And nobody should deny me that right. Mm -hmm. Well, you have acknowledged there is no vacancy for the leadership of the United National Congress, but you've also said that if people and your family want you to lead, you will take up the challenge. 
I understand that. Do you want to lead the United National Congress? Do you want to be the political leader of the United National Congress? This is not a job that you apply for with a, with a, with a Kirk Lemmer, as you may. With a, you know, it's not a job you apply for. Whenever there is a vacancy, whenever the, an, an election is called, every single member, by virtue of the party's constitution, every member, and I can tell you the, the UNC has a lot of good people, have a lot of good people. I do feel that I am capable and qualified to lead any organization, my own organization, a private sector organization, a political organization, but that is not my call. The call is for the membership to decide that when the time comes. So to tell you that, listen, I want to lead and I don't want to lead and what I want to lead is irrelevant today. Today, I can tell you, I do feel that if there is an opportunity to present myself before the, the membership as a potential candidate to lead, well, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. But this is, this, this is a decision that the membership has to make. It is not my decision at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, does uh, the camaraderie within the party still exist? Because uh, based off of the responses, for example, from uh, Devendranath Tanku, from even the public relations officer, Dr. Kukmi, who uh, even from Senator Wade Mark, he didn't necessarily call a name, but he says some people's quest for progress, sometimes uh, ambition uh, exceeds talent. Uh, does that camaraderie still exist? Your comments uh, are being interpreted as dissent and possibly even uh, one way of mutiny. Well, I, I don't know if that's the case. Uh, I mean, and I, I sit with my colleagues. We have a very good relationship, all of them. I mean, we, we were in Parliament last Friday and uh, we debated well. I, I sit with all my colleagues. I don't know if it is me they're speaking about. I, I mean, <laughs> every one of my colleagues have my number. I sit with them in the party caucus and nobody has reached out to me to ask a question. So anything someone says on a political platform, I mean, you take it in strides at the end of the day. I am sure if there's a concern, if there is a concern, um, I have a very good relationship with every one of my colleagues, including the political leader. So if there's something that may be outside there, which I don't know of, uh, I haven't heard my name calling anything. I mean, there's a lot of uh, conversations on social media. Uh, I can't prevent people from saying anything or, or making any assumption of, of anything, as a matter of fact. But in terms of the relationship with my colleagues, um, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, we're going to Parliament today. We're dealing with the issue of property tax today. I mean, the PNM has bundled that in the most disgusting way that you can think. You know, and that is what is, what, that is, what is, what is the matter today. And, and we're going to deal with that frontally as a team in parliament so i mean whatever is circling in the space outside of that that's people and their own speculation but uh the relationship is is good and it's sound and um i, I have no problems mm -hmm. has it been expressed to you is it a common thing that it is expressed to you uh, about dissatisfaction uh with the leadership or the national executive of the united national congress well, when people talk about dissatisfaction and they talk about, uh, you know, the leadership, understand this, uh, the leadership is not Mrs. Pasad Bisesa. The leadership is a, it's the entire system in terms of how all of us operate. At the end of the day, the party consists of several arms. Many of them, I would say, has been dysfunctional for quite some time. And when the electorate, when the membership looks at the whole then a concern comes out of that. So, you know, you must address the issue of the whole, you know, all the parts working together. Whatever issues that are inside there, it, it has to be addressed because nobody wants to go to the elections in 2025 or whenever it's called with a, a, a weak system. Because I'll tell you, this, all of us in the UNC, we want the best for what is, what, want what is best for the country. None of us wants to continue with a country run by the People's National Movement under Dr. Keith Rowley. There is no hope for the future. There is no vision for the future. I mean, uh, come on, a man. If we don't, you know, make sure or ensure that we convince ourselves that we have the best possible uh, design in our party organ, because governments sit on your party. A government sit on your party's foundation. So to have a strong government, 
we must have a very strong party. And that's all I'm asking for. Well, Mr. Perry, I, let me, not, I, I just yeah. like to, sorry, let me just interject. Sure. You said there's no hope, sure. there's no vision under yeah. the stewardship of Prime the Minister Pienna. Dr. Keith Rowley and the People's yeah. National Movement. Yeah. Based off of what you're seeing this morning, though, arguably, one can interpret your comments as saying there's no you know, ambition, there's no hope, there's no leadership, there's no vision. Under that of uh, the stewardship of Kamala Pasabi Sasa and the United National Congress in its current form. No, well, that's your words, that's not mine. That's your words, right? All I am saying you, I am, I am, I am giving you the view of the widest population of the membership of the party, which I have had conversations with for, for, for many, many months. And whether, whether anybody wants to tune into any one person, well, they're free to do so. All I'm saying is that the party, which I have been a member of for many, many years, and I, I'm of the view that there are, there are serious issues that we have to address. And a lot of it is internal. I mean, I wouldn't come here and identify item A, B, C, D, E, F, G as what are the issues to be resolved. Those are internal party matters that I suspect as time go along, it will be addressed. But we must be able to say it and get the, get the party to start working on it at the end of the day. So, I mean, if anybody wants to target Mrs. Passat, B. Sessa, or target anybody else, don't want to target Rushton Parry, that's fine. But there is a bigger picture here is how do we make sure that we can have the, 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 the issues addressed and fixed and prepared to be able to fight the PNM whenever the general election is called. And, and, and I mean, that's the view that I hold. And how and how do you suppose it is the best way to, to fix the issues, whatever the issues may be internally, mm. yeah. right? That will never be fully revealed to the public. But that right. being said, what do you suppose are the best ways, the solutions to deal with these issues and fix the party going forward? Well, a lot of conversation. And um, what is the window befo before us? What is the window before us? There is a window of an internal constitutionally due election sometime in June. And as far as the membership is concerned, that is a starting point. Because that is the only time that you find that the membership gets an opportunity to hit reset or reload. And in that activity, anybody, any team, any group of persons within the party, there is a space now to allow them to say, OK, this is what we're seeing internally. This is what we need to do. This is what we are going to do. And you have whatever you know plans and proposals at the end of the day to strengthen the organization, to develop people, to optimize the resources that we have. And based on that conversation, the membership will decide, okay, uh, the current team that we have is the best team. No problem, let's go forward. Mm -hmm. If they feel that there is some other group that may have a better idea or a better plan, a better strategy, well, we want to hear as members of the party. So. You know, this is not about attacking anybody. This has nothing about personalities here. This is about our party. This is about, you know, having a, a, a plan and a vision. How do we go forward? And as I said, you know, we always have to be on election footing. We always have to be ready. So we must be ready to, to go to the polls in 35 days if Dr. Rowley comes today in the parliament and dissolve parliament and say, look, we want to go to the polls. Mm -hmm. And we, we have to be ready for that. So this is what this is what the whole gist and the nature of the conversation. Because at, at the end of the day, the, the 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 leadership of the party is here to serve the membership, and if the membership is asking for something, well, the leadership ought to listen. Mm -hmm. It is a bit confusing that national executive elections are constitutionally due in June. The leadership position is uh, due next year, from what I understand. However, uh, Mrs. Prasadby says has indicated that nominations will close in April. Screening will start in May. Now, screening for candidates all before the national executive elections are constitutionally due. Are, do you have any concerns this morning? Are there concerns that there may be an attempt to delay the national executive elections? I don't know whether there is any attempt to delay because I can't read into anything that's in somebody's mind. What I can tell you that there will be a lacuna in terms of you're having screening before an internal election, okay? So this NATEX, which portions of the NATEX form a screening committee, and then they select candidates for a general election, 41 candidates. You have the NATEX elections, which is constitutionally doing June, and a new team goes in. 
what happens there? What about legitimate expectations of the people that have been screened? What happens there? What about the fact that the, the new team may not agree with the decisions of the old team? That is just open for chaos at the end of the day. So while I have every intention to file my nomination to return for third term, I was screened in 2015 and I won an election. I was screened again in 2020 and I won an election. I am going to place myself before the people of Mayaro and the party to be their, 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 their choice for 2025. But I do have a concern that if you have this issue popping up, then it could throw the party in a little bit of internal chaos with regards to candidates. And I have a problem with that. And I have expressed that quite clearly uh, to the leadership of the party. But I have every intention to file because that is, that is the process. And uh, as a disciplined member of the party, we will follow the process to make sure that you know I'm considered uh, you know, to return as the MP in, in 2025 or whenever the election is called. Mm -hmm. you, you said you've raised these issues with the leadership. Um, how have they responded uh, to your, well, what, what can deem as, as you raising your concerns, what have they responded with? How have they well, responded? All I, all I can tell you, the, the issues have been acknowledged and I assume that has been discussed at the highest level and I await for a response. Mm -hmm. But I, I have raised these matters in writing. I have reached out to the political leader on a number of issues in writing as well. Um, it's up for discussion. We've had several conversations. Again, I, I do believe there are a number of things that ought to remain internal into the party. And, um, you know, the, these matters, they're not unknown. You know, we continue to, 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 to raise the issues, you know, very respectfully. And I have a duty as an MP, and I do what I believe is right. I will send my emails, I will send my reports, and I hope discussions come out of it. Mm -hmm. Last week, Monday, I had Dr. Kirk Mehu on the program. I, uh, I asked Dr. Kirk Mehu about the conversations internally, and I asked him, I asked him whether or not there were conversations between himself um, and Chairman Dave Tanku, um, because Chairman Dave Tanku, uh, in responding to the comments that you made says uh, we must never allow the people's national movement to distract us and divide us that being said i asked dr cook me who what was meant by this he says you know i can't speak on anybody else maybe uh, dave tanku was raising the issue about uh, the former relationship between the people's national movement and Rushton Parry and uh, how you were kicked out from the people's national movement that's an issue that has uh, arisen once more how do you respond to this well, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that matter was addressed fully in an article in the Express yesterday. It was total fabrication. I mean, the PNM continues to, to re remain inept on anything. So they tossed that in the political guile in 2015, right? I mean, this thing was a, a piece of paper Franklin Khan waved in front of everybody and said that I was a member of the party. So that matter has been fully ventilated. I just want to make it clear that I have never been a member of the PNM. I have, there's nothing with a signature on it. I don't know if anybody applies to be a member of anything with a thumbprint, right? There is nothing with a signature. I have never been a member of any political party outside of the United National Congress. And I think I've, I fully ventilated that in the papers yesterday. Mm -hmm. You said you uh, intend to, to, to file your papers to... to once more represent the people of Mayaru uh, as member of parliament in the upcoming uh, general elections and, and that's all well and fine but do you think that following how you've spoken very openly you've expressed your frustrations without going into detail very openly do you think that you would be accepted uh, to run under the United National Congress in 2025 for Mayaru following your open uh, expressions of concern I don't think I've vented any frustration. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a frustrationless type of person, right? What I do believe is that, you know, our party was founded on principles of democracy and fair play and justice. And if asking on behalf of the membership of which I am a member, and don't forget that, no one should forget before being an MP or whatever, you are members of the party. And that is not frustration. That is about asking for something that is constitutionally due. And you're asking the party, well, look, let, let it happen. So, I mean, whether you should take that and decide because of someone who is exercising 
something that is a foundation of a party. Listen, the UNC is the most democratic party in the Caribbean. We were the first party to put one man, one vote, you know. PNM catch up on that afterwards, right? One man, one vote in the party's political system was the strongest sign of democracy. And we continue to be the most democratic party. I can tell you, Mrs. Passard Bicessa has really allowed all of us over the last eight years to develop and grow as MPs internally. We speak all the time. We are able to, you know, discuss matters very openly. Uh, you know, so so I don't know why this conversation in the public space says, well, you know, you have someone who's frustrated. And so, no, this is not frustration. This is about wanting that, that you know, we continue to fulfill the, the democratic values of the party because that is how we want to run government. Mm -hmm. That is how we should be running government along the lines of democracy and fear play. And, and all we're saying is that, look, let, let, let it happen. And, you know, so what is the fair about it? You know, what is the fair? Okay. Now, as I said, I don't think the party has made any formal statement. There's a lot of people talking a lot of things, a lot of platform talks as well, right? I have not been informed in writing by anybody whether, you know, somebody has a position on the matter. I have not been, you know, called in by anybody. You know, there's a lot of rumors about it and... You know, we continue to operate day to day. The common enemy here is the PNM. I, I, I don't disagree with that. And I can tell you, we continue to remain united. And that is it. I mean, we have UN, UNC. The UN, UNC means united, right? And we continue to remain, remain united against the People's National Movement. And I mean, look at the bright side. The, the, the UNC is the most diverse, welcoming party. You could be, to, you know, in one whatever political uh, persuasion that you win, the UNC will continue to remain the most welcoming party to welcome everybody because political organizations have to grow. And you don't grow by closing doors. You grow by having welcoming arms and you want people to understand the philosophy that your party exposes at the end of the day. And, and, and I think that is the best way to do it, you know, open arms. So we will continue to be a united force in the parliament, outside of the parliament. Like any family, there are internal issues. We try to keep it as, you know, internal as possible. Mm -hmm. I have not made any public comment chastising anyone complaining. By all I'm all all we're asking for that there are things on the horizon that are within the party's constitution, and the membership is asking for those things to happen. That's all. I don't. Know. I can't see how that is dissent when you want to improve something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the case. You want to improve to do better to make better. That's all. Certainly. Well, Mr. Perry, my final question to you is, you said that uh, you want to be a part of any organization where hard work and determination can lead one to the top, and uh, one must have a hard word, work ethic. Now, I understand that you are uh, describing your ambitions and who you see yourself as an individual. Um, yes. That being said, though, does that hard work ethic and that determination exist within the party currently? Well, there are a lot of hard workers. I, I don't deny that there are several people who work very, very hard to keep the PNM on check, including myself. So, I mean, if anybody in any organization doesn't want to pursue hard work with determination, well, then there's a problem. There's a serious problem. That is my ethos at the end of the day. And I don't say I'm the only person with it. There are several people, perhaps hundreds of people inside there. But I think the issue here is optimization, Peter. Mm -hmm. I think optimization is the key thing here. How do we get all of these people, all of these people who have, you know, great work ethic, good ideas, how do we as a party optimize the resources that we have and we form a form formidable team to take on the PNM going forward? And optimization is the key. We do have incredible good people in our parliament. We have incredible MPs who are all very, very skilled, good background and so on. But I want to say that we need to optimize from MPs, councillors, you know, activists. How do we optimize the best? Get hard work, get a good work ethic, and we will be a, a force to reckon with any day. And, and that is my ethos. I don't think anybody should blame me for that or see that as a hindrance. You know, in the party at the end of the day, you should want more people like that, quite frankly. 
Sydney. Mr. Parry, I want to thank you very much for your time this morning and thank you very much for joining us on the program and uh, thank you for bringing clarification because you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, there is a lot of conversations happening publicly and I'm glad we were able to have a conversation and present a platform where you are able to uh, clarify uh, what you've meant by your commentary and your position on where you currently stand. So thank you very much, Sue, Absolutely. for your time this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Take thank care. Thank you. All the best. Uh, Mr. Rushton Parry, uh, the opposition member of parliament uh, for Mayaro, joining us uh, on the program this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, Mr. Parry, you have his own words there. You heard it from him himself. Um, it's up to you now as to how you would like to interpret what Mr. Parry has said. You can take it at face value or if you think deeper into it, that's all on you. But uh, we are most uh, grateful for his time this morning and we are pleased that we were able to have uh, such a conversation. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for AM Prime on WES and Constance Capital. Thank you very much to all my guests uh, for their presence this morning and their contribution to the program. I'm Keaton Shaw wishing you a safe day ahead, a productive one. And when I stress on the word safe, I, I put all my thoughts, prayers and positive energy into that. So I hope to see you again tomorrow morning, ladies and gentlemen. Until then, keep well. Bye-bye.